God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asi, Phrygia and Palphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let us be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you, the Spirit of Truth will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known God or me. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to the one who sent me. Yet 
none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the advocate to you. The Holy Spirit will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to God and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth, declaring to you the things that are to come. The Spirit will glorify me by taking what is mine and declaring it to you. All that God has is mine. For this reason, I said that the Spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. My dear friends, grace to you and peace from God Almighty and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Pentecost. That's today. It's great to see the red out there. You look awesome. Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit showed up in wind and fire and empowered a cowering cadre of disciples into evangelical mission. What a day it must have been. I love the story that we find in Acts chapter 2. Well, how do you experience the Holy Spirit in your life? Many of us might struggle to answer that question, but I want to suggest that it's maybe not as hard as we make it out to be. For instance, last Sunday, I had a Holy Spirit sighting sitting in my recliner. It's true. I was the designated survivor last weekend, which simply means that I was the pastor at Our Saviors who was not on site on Sunday morning. It's been a safety protocol that we've followed during the pandemic to ensure that not all of us would be struck down at the same time with COVID-19 should we have some kind of community spread event here at church. By the way, as of June 1st, we're discontinuing that practice because, get this, it's no longer necessary. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I was in my recliner watching worship here at Our Saviors on television, and I witnessed a movement of the Holy Spirit when those assembled over in the Celebrate Center broke into spontaneous and jubilant applause, not once, not twice, but three times. It seemed to me that the Holy Spirit was at work seeding joy where for over a year there had been fear and trepidation. And not only that, but I was literally moved to tears by Pastor Justin's powerful sermon. To me, he seemed to be a preacher possessed by the Holy Spirit, which is a good thing. I told him this last week, man, you were on fire. It was great. But it's not just in worship when we experience the Holy Spirit. I took a phone call this last week from a former member of this church who was calling for some advice on how to help a friend in need. She told me that she had finished helping another friend through a particular rough patch of circumstances and had been praying that God would show her how she could be of help and service to someone else. On the phone, she told me, the very next day after I prayed that prayer, I received a phone call. That was the answer to my prayer. So again, 
How do you experience the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit often makes herself known amid great uncertainty. Take John's Gospel, for instance. Today we read just a portion of chapter 15, an excerpt from Jesus' uh, Last Supper with his disciples. And in that reading, there is talk of the coming Holy Spirit. But I think we need to remind ourselves of the broader context of that story to get a sense of what's going on and of how the Holy Spirit works. So earlier in the story of that now infamous meal, Jesus, with the weight of knowing that his death was imminent, bearing down not only on him but on all of them collectively, took off his outer robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and proceeded to wash the feet of every one of his disciples in a gesture of love and humility. Then he went on to speak knowingly of his betrayal, and you know, it wasn't long after that that Judas got up from the table and left to carry out his plan. Jesus then gave his friends a new commandment, to love one another as he had loved them, and he even shared with his good friend Peter, who was well-meaning, I'm sure, that he, in fact, later on that night, would deny ever knowing Jesus, even despite their close relationship. So in, the, in that time of great uncertainty, the gravity of the moment weighing down upon them, Jesus said these words, do not let your hearts be troubled. You can't see it right now, but you're going to be doing everything that I have been doing and more, because I will be sending you another advocate, the Spirit of Truth, who will teach you everything and bring you peace, even when the world around you is causing you suffering and unrest. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus said, or alone. I will be with you always. So do not be afraid. The story of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, which Carolyn shared with us this morning, is the same kind of scenario because there was a whole bunch of displaced Jews that were likely in Jerusalem for that occasion. They were eager to reconnect with their Jewish roots and identity, so they came back to the holy city in order to celebrate the festival of Pentecost, a festival that comes in the Jewish faith some 50 days after Passover. Today, that festival celebrates the giving of the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai. At the same time, Jesus' disciples were also in the holy city, in Jerusalem, gathered together in this room, and for them, it had been 50 days since the resurrection, and in that span of time, the risen Jesus had appeared to them on several occasions, And then, as is depicted on our front wall, miraculously ascended into heaven as they stood and looked on. Moments before his ascension, Jesus had told them they would be witnesses, his witnesses, to the ends of the earth. But now, at Pentecost, some ten days after this glorious event, they were again together, without a clear idea of what to do next, when all at once the Holy Spirit blew in and filled that room, lit it up with flames of fire and a power that enabled every one of them to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in languages they had never learned. In Scripture, 
Amid great uncertainty, the Holy Spirit shows up to bring comfort and peace and make possible a future that up to that point had been previously unimagined. Well, we also have been and are living at a in a time of great uncertainty. The pandemic was brought on by a highly contagious virus that we knew absolutely nothing about. Entire nations went into lockdown to control the spread of the disease. Global commerce and trade nearly ground to a halt, leaving us to both wonder about long-term economic and social impacts and debate what is essential and what is not. The, the environment seemed to enjoy this time of forced inactivity and reduced productivity because pollution, of course, was greatly reduced, which only raises more questions for us about the sustainability of life as we have come to know it. Governments aggressively funded the development of vaccines as a first line of defense against this death-dealing virus, but progress on those vaccines came so rapidly relative to what is typically the case that vaccine hesitation is causing experts to doubt today whether we will ever reach herd immunity. And now that we can sense the light at the end of the pandemic tunnel, it's not at all clear what our so-called new normal will or should be. That's been our experience during the pandemic. It's not been all of life, has it? <laughs> I mean, if we take the pandemic off the table, we still know life to be full of uncertainties, some of which are brought on by our own brokenness and fallibility, but many more of which are the result of forces we cannot control. All of it can weigh us down, sometimes even paralyzing us, leaving us with no clear way forward and moving us ever closer to the edge of despair. Today, however, on this day of Pentecost, I stand before you in defiance of that despair to proclaim to you that now is Holy Spirit time. In this age of uncertainty, when our sight is clouded by suffering and pain and our strength proves insufficient to prevail against challenges that seem far too great and unrelenting, I declare to you the good news of Pentecost, that Jesus is in fact alive and we are not alone. The promised Holy Spirit is within us and among us. In a world ruled by sin and death, the Holy Spirit leads us to believe in the one who alone forgives sin and brings life out of death. At a time when overwhelming suffering and great uncertainty limit our vision and imagination, the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to see that suffering and death are not the end of us. That fullness of life is found through faith in this one whose love for us and for all creation knows no bounds. And when the future is indiscernible, not ours to know, when fear and, and anxiety and our own lack of knowledge get the better of us, the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us forward beyond our imagination toward God's preferred future, a future in which we, in fact, serve as agents of God's redeeming love and grace. 
So all of this has me wondering. Maybe our experience of the Holy Spirit is as simple as whispering a prayer together amid a time of great uncertainty. Please pray with me. Simply repeat what I say. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and forgive us. Come and heal us. Come and change us. Give us eyes to see anew. Give us hearts overflowing with love. Give us hands that care. And the will to follow wherever you lead. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.